So, so far, uh, the, some of the popular uh, erasure codes that have been implemented here, you know, with the rates, we looked at the uh, range of erasure coding, um, even odd, uh, you know, rate 1 to 5, and most of them can recover from one uh, node or two node error, two, er two node failures. And, and they all uh, basically have uh, lots of um, uh, communication, like it needs to contact, uh, if, if there are n, n, if they need to recover from uh, L drives, they need to contact, uh, um, you know, uh, generally the, uh, whatever the K uh, used for the MDS design. So once you have such an uh, MDS code, the RS, uh, the Facebook used 1410 Reed Solomon code, and that's quite powerful and that helps you to read the data. But actual reading happens in the following way. For what happens is just like in the in what Aaron shown, when you run a map reduce task, the uh, the program initially uh, the the Hadoop have introduced a triple replication of the data. So the, every map is reduced into three places. And you, that as long as the data is hot, the program continues to run on it. And once the hardness is finished, then um, the, you know, if, if there is a need to be raided, that's a time you start deleting the extra um, fragments and just simply create parity fragments and store. That's how it used to happen before in Hadoop. In the newer version of the Hadoop, it is possible to now to raid it in the beginning itself. So when you have such a consideration, what will happen is basically, so you have uh, uh, nodes, let us say, the stores there, and uh, 10 of them, and four of them parity. So this four parity, and so, yeah, so let, let us say this is the um, the name node, and it's connecting to the different uh, data nodes. So all these, uh, I should not put the thing. So maybe in the, all this distributed system, this you, know, you think that nodes are everywhere, and they are all connected to say one name node in some way, and this this is actually part of each of these data nodes. Okay. So, in, in, when it is triple replicated, so this is available in three different places. Second uh, fragment is about, second block is available in uh, everywhere. Assume that there is a there is a disk available to do uh, those are the machines, and so the program gets run. And you know, it's just that not that always the program runs on the same data. So it depends on the map task and reduce task. So the, the blocks will be available at that time. And maybe it's doing some, some task at the time. And suddenly, let us say, one node which is uh, reporting the data here, it doesn't report. So that means that the name node decides that who has the two data, or maybe here, can you also take this load? So he can reassign the map task to this. Now, do, do, because there is a, a copy available here. Um, but Again, it might choose uh, that uh, second one, but there's also another one here, which one depends on basically how busy that node uh, is there at that time and so many things. So this, is the, this comes under the design of Hadoop and you know, that's how. So the people who come up with such software, the engineering that software, they will take care of all of this scheduling and other aspects. So there's a lot of work there and the coding is, you know, storage is only one part of that big thing. So, but once it is, uh, like say, for example, it is, a, um, you know, for example, um, raided, sometimes then, then at the time, these nodes, which are now being raided, raided data is a part of that. Now, let us say this is uh, finished. Now, now, there won't be any replicas anymore. Uh, uh, there will be uh, only uh, all the, uh, let us say, second, three, four, five, say up to 10, and there will be parity nodes elsewhere in the thing. Then these nodes, while doing other times, need to now access uh, these uh, and repair it. So with the traditional repairing, what happens is the, uh, how we do each, uh, we, we looked at it, it is 64 MB uh, block. Okay? So 64 MB block is stored in all of this. So now think that all of these are the data nodes, they are all of them 64 MB. And in case of a repair, there will be 
uh, downloading of so much of the data from others and starts repairing a node. So this is obviously quite uh, time consuming and, and so it is not going to be uh, worthwhile to do that. So, so also another thing that we need to know is that when this RS coding happens, this is all right you know when you are writing and if you want to recover it once in a while, this, this can do. But still at least uh, it can tolerate any four node thing, so it has a lot of other advantages anyway. So the, uh, the issue now is that while you know in downloading that data, what Hadoop does is um, it takes everything in terms of chunk. So all the red items it comes in a chunk and the chunks are usually comes in 1 MB block, 1 MB chunks. So your 64 MB of block data comes up periodically 1 MB, 1 MB. So obviously with uh, a, a data node, a new node, let us say a new node in the system trying to recreate uh, this particular last node will uh, have to download. Uh, and and then uh, then this uh, this has to be reconstructed. Uh, this this particular but it does it by uh, you know downloading one one MB one MB. So once the uh, all the chunks are downloaded, so now you can think that all uh, the let us say ten data comes in the form of a chunk. It's a one MB chunk. Ten of them, and uh, then the last node can be recreated, but as you can see that the first byte of every of this chunk, they are related to the Reed Solomon code that we learnt in the first thing. So obviously you will do whatever that is for the one byte and it will be done for periodically everything. So really what is available for let us say repair is that you can use some kind of a parallelism that exists in the distributed systems, maybe that I can do something in, in pipelining. Um, uh, and so, so we had to try to come up with some innovation idea at how to improve this. So, okay. Now, why still people keep as a, so obviously this idea that handling everything is a one byte, you know. So even though it's a one one MB of data, so there are basically one MB bytes of Reed Solomon codes, the code words. So each byte, the first byte in each of them, fourteen is a code word. Next byte is a code word. Next byte is a code word. So it moves in this way. Is everybody clear about this, this idea? So I mean, I'm trying to tell in a more, uh, this fashion. So, and this this idea of putting everything, we can call it as a stripe. Now the stripe is one. That now the, in the, within the stripe means it just works with the one byte of first node, second byte of first node up to fourteenth byte of second node. It's a one stripe. So, in order to recreate, you have to uh, you have to actually download any ten of this stripe and recreate it, and you do have to do one by one. So, this process, the the what the framework of in this lecture, we look at a, a framework introduced by one researcher Rashmi, uh, and this is a piggybacking framework. Uh, it has been done is basically she she introduced another type of erasure called called hitchhiker code. So. That means that while doing one thing, you know, in some sense, you know, you know what is hitchhiking? You want to go from one place to another. You take a lift from one person and then join, right? So you can using the same idea, you know, the blocks before uh, this kind of thing is some construction of hitchhiker code, and we will look at uh, uh, its uh, um, you know construction and add some ideas here today. Okay, so that's it's in fact um, this is. I mean, if you look at from coding point of view, the ideas are not you know, For example, you can easily follow this, but what is its importance comes in the uh, thing is that because in in a general Hadoop thing, it is already our Reed Solomon code is there, not changing the existing uh, thing much, but just introducing some novelty or innovations that helps us to speed up the repair process by either increasing, decreasing the bandwidth, and also increase the speed. Of course, you'll incur the, the, you will do the same. You know, we, we can't avoid Reed Solomon code work, like in the sense that decoding part that all will be there. But you will need to speed this. This is the idea. Okay, so let's look at the piggy, piggybacking framework proposed by Rashmi. Um, in this, uh, you know, that um, there is, it was done for years, and now I think there are quite a bit of uh, uh, work happened on that. So piggybacked RS codes. So what is that? It's basically changing the RS code. 
uh, slightly in an, in an orderly fashion so that uh, the recovery of a failed node in case you know recovery of a single failed node is improved in some some sense yeah but yet retaining the mds property we don't want to uh, remove the mds property but as you remember in case of a uh, local regenerative code a uh, little bit of uh, you will lose the mds property uh, but okay but we introduce a locality there and that may there is another uh, design space that is the, the, that, the, that means it is another approach whereas this is a complementary approach so I thought we will mention it today. So this uh, general the claim is it, 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 it leads to about 30 percent reduction in uh, uh, download and also disk IO. So it is built on the Reed Solomon code based erasure code in HDFS right. So it retains all the desired properties of the code. So now it is going to change we are not going to whatever uh, RS code promises we will do that but we will do much more efficiently. So the latest version of the Hadoop actually Hadoop 3 has these codes built into the uh, erasure code module. So they have been able to do it. So really the success of this framework lies in this fact that is a, a practical engineered good engineered software you know or adopts a, a coding innovations within that in that sense it is interesting and that is why we thought we will go through this. So the main issues in this is uh, you know the main uh, so obviously the, the issues is, is exactly the thing that I mentioned for the LRC there is not much difference. So the cost when you lo look up a storage first the main cost comes in the actually the hardware itself but then you need to also maintain them you know provide air conditioning and power and as I mentioned in the first day I told you the really the data centers are growing around the world and it is almost to constitute 3 percent of the whole um, you know the electricity usage in the world which means you can think it is quite considerable 3 you know electricity we do use it for many things but just the data centers require 3 percent means you know it is it's, it's a you know it is a huge amount and, and so saving that would always minimizing the storage requirement is essential and of course MD, MDS codes are optimal in that sense and we, this code innovation you know retains all of that property. So what is a frame pretty big framework uh, it is an efficient and you know uh, so basically this framework um, improves on you know as I told you that when a node downloads it downloads like a, a one chunk. So now you want to somehow make use of uh, uh, the operations in a piggyback you know like a pipeline for fashion. So for example whatever that has happened just before uh, can be embedded into the next one so that while uh, decoding I will only refer to either this or the previous block and hence I do not incur much of a delay. So which means that uh, I may need to somehow uh, change my uh, sub uh, stripe idea to sub stripe. So this piggybacking framework now introduces uh, sub stripes in the, in the in the node. So you have uh, now uh, the code now uh, uh, you have say uh, 10 and this is let us say into 4 1. So now we, we have we will introduce a sub So you can have more than one line, you, uh, you know, of, of code. But the, the, this is actually the bytes downloaded in the first place. This will be the next uh, state, and so forth. And so we, we will try to interrelate the issues there, and that's what the piggybacking operations. So these functions are designed with a goal of reducing data rate and download requirement. So what you do is that you have already downloaded. So uh, you you will actually accomplish the task of either uh, node creation or uh, are basically node repair uh, by using the data downloaded in the previous step itself uh, not uh, going out to uh, I mean mainly to reduce the data rate like, um, you know, like uh, how much I do. So I might contact more than one nodes but I might contact specific part of the node I will not uh, so in the case of LRCs you will uh, to repair you will only you will only contact a minimum number of uh, nodes here I might contact more number of nodes but I may not download all part of it may be part of it. So how much I, I, uh, I, I actually download for the part depends on the this substripe idea substripe idea I will explain to that. These, uh, so th this retains many properties of the underlying code and the minimum distance and you know and the other things. So obviously we are not going to change any properties of the code will will do the retain thing. So here is an, a motivating example. So why we can we do it or not first of all let us take a simple example. 
So, I hope uh, the first one everybody can understand now uh, and that is basically an MDS code. So, MDS code let us say now this is a 4, uh, so in a k is equal to 4, so there are 4 information nodes, 2 parity nodes. So, in the normal our MDS code nomenclature we, we call it as 6, 4 code. Whereas, in the previous uh, nomenclature we will have a n, a k equal to 4, parity equal to 2. So, uh, 4 comma 2 where 2 uh, you say the information node and parity node that kind of thing. Of course, if you have some locality they add something, but you know when a context is clear we will not worry. So, let us look at an example of MD4, I hope everybody can read this. So, so the first node are simply information bit. So, in normal uh, uh, RS code if you look at the first uh, column here, so each one is a stripe now, the stripe goes from uh, just like you know non, here I mentioned it as horizontally, now the, in this one the stripe is actually vertical. Okay? So, this is a stripe and that corresponds to uh, an RS code which is, is very evident here. So, if you have a symbol here 4 and this, this symbol is a simply the checksum, this one is i times ai, so the, this is the parity node. Okay? This is RS code. Now, if, if it is not a, a piggybacked code, let us say uh, it is only a one column one. Okay? But um, um, so there is nothing wrong, you know. For example, uh, the, if you, you know, if it's RS code, the same rules are followed for the next symbol as well. So you can see that this is just an RS code. Nothing. Uh, the, you can actually manage this. So for example, if this node is uh, not available, then you you do other nodes like uh, this one and all three nodes, uh, and you can really recover by this one. So obviously, any four, any k out of uh, six you can recover the data that is there. So, in order to construct a, a piggyback code what uh, the framework allows you to some kind of a in, 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 you know intermediate step that takes. Um, so, what it, do, what it does is the same thing. So, it retains. So, now first of all intentionally dividing a stripe into two strips. So, now you have a sub stripe and two strip stripes. Um, so, the first one is same as what you have, there is no change because the same original code. In the second one, uh, you can see that the first five you do not know, for the sixth node what you do, you take the, um, you create a some kind of a, a piggybacked ID code as soon as when, when you are downloaded i equal to 1 to 2 i times a, a i. So, this is basically a 1 plus a 2 times uh, 2, okay, this one. 2 is basically, you know, it is just a f in the field it could any other element, we know that a 1 plus 2 a 2, that is this, uh, this one. This because once you have downloaded it, that is there, that you add to, so this is the intermediate step, that will be 6, you just add into this. Okay. Now, in the final piggyback step what you do, you take this uh, sixth, the second symbol from the sixth node and subtract with the first here. So, when you subtract this with this, what will happen? So, there is uh, i a i, i equal to 1 to 4, when you subtract i equal to 1 to 2 a i, what, left, what, uh, what is left here is i into a i, i equal to 3 to 4. So, this minus this is and then changed here. Okay? So, now this is i into 3 to 4 a into a i and, and this one is uh, sigma i equal to 1 to 4 minus minus i into uh, b i. Okay? So, you subtract this with this. So, then what you get is this. Is that clear? Um, and then that, that becomes the piggyback code. Okay? See this, this the piggyback code now looks like this. You got a now it's like a vector code because now we have substrips, uh, and the fifth node is simply the sigma of, of B each other. The last one is basically um, the i into a i. You know this is uh, you know you, you you only get a partial node from this one, uh, and also it's subtracted with this one and, and this. Okay. Now what happens is that this one can be used uh, to. So let's see whether we can. Uh, uh, correct. Uh, so, any let us say assume that one of them is down load, okay? one of them is uh, one node is down, n 1 is down. So, what will happen is let us say how, 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 ooh, 
what happened? Okay, n one is down now. So that means we need to get a one and a two from the code. So how do you actually recreate it? So I mean, I think is that I mean, if you download all four things, you can always do it. But the idea is that now you will you will store only part of some node. So remember, uh, we we have this uh, this piggyback part here. So first is uh, I'm saying is that in this case you only uh, so you you first download B2, B3. So let's say you download B2, B3, B4, and sigma Bi. Will this uh, what will this give me? Can I get B1? So once I can get B1. Okay, B1 is there. Now, once you get B1, then you download um, this 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 one and and this A2. So, if you download now N6 of two and A2, what can you do? Yeah, can you get A1? So, how much uh, you downloaded? Uh, no, you we downloaded one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. So if you, if it were to an RS code, how much you would have downloaded? Eight. So what's the advantage now? You got twenty five percent reduction. So so and this is whatever I mentioned is same thing true for other things. So for example, if it is A two, it's the same thing. For A3 and uh, uh, A4, you need to do download the uh, all other parts. So maybe you can take a uh, thing and find out. It's a very interesting uh, code. So you can say 25% advantage you could do. Okay. So except that you know. So for example, if you want to uh, do something with this one, but you will now download uh, the the first symbol of this as opposed to the other one. Okay. Um, so the, you know that's one aspect of a example of piggyback code. So you understand what's a piggyback code idea. So using this, so and this can be now generated piggyback idea for not just for RS code. You can take any base code and start thinking about this direction. But when you uh, you know add some function of the previous block, yeah. So that will actually help you to um, you know um, uh, you know the, the functions to add. You have to actually carefully choose in order to minimize the uh, the blocks downloaded. So you can, in this case, now the way, you know the chunks you can actually divide into two, and so that way you can do it. Of course, you, you know one way to think is how how far how long I should go. You, you can probably do multiple stripes and probably improve it, but then that may not be good. From uh, you know uh, uh, there will be a lot of other overheads involving, for example, metadata associated with downloading this. So when you have, as for example, a, uh, in this system, let's say you are downloading some particular chunk from another node, uh, you will have to you know to manage that within the programming part. You need lots of metadata to handle that. So as you increase the number of strips here, metadata also increases. Thus. Uh, not, it's not always clear whether uh, how far you should go. So one of the problems that you should do it is actually um, what should be the uh, right amount of you know uh, this is called uh, sub packetization. So in some sense, this is the idea of sub packetization here, but we'll work with some constraints, and that's what the hitchhiker code you do. So so far, this is this is okay for the uh, code, which is that is in the information symbol. What about in um, uh, the parity symbols? So can you do the similar thing? If we, if you lose one of the parity symbols, uh, can you g get an improvement in download? Because whenever you have some download, let us say, irrespective of which node fail, uh, you should get some kind of let us say twenty five percent is whatever that you want. You know, you, you should assure it. So so for the parity one, uh, the idea goes further. What uh, you do it? What you notice here in this case is. The N5, the first one is never used at all, because uh, you know whenever something happens, you always start with the piggyback code and, and, and do it. So, what 
what was done is a new um, you know piggyback for the N5 was created that is uh, by uh, this was uh, for example initially this N5 was simple a i a1 equal to a i. So, you use this previous one and you, you add it here. So, you can see that C i. So, now also now you increase the uh, subscribe to more than uh, 2. So, now each data is now within a uh, within a block is divided into 4 parts. So, now there are 4 stripes uh, subscribes um, and N5 is, uh, is same as this, but now N this third one you use the data from here see uh, uh, the, you add this to i b i and also from i equal to 1 to 2 i times a i. So, now you create a, a some kind of a piggyback data uh, in the in the parity uh, which is uh, based on 3 subscripts. Okay. Now, uh, this can be also improved like uh, now you can see that how, how you can do for example, uh, uh, you, you need to recover say how, how efficiently can you recover uh, a loss of uh, uh, say you lose this. How, how can you how can you do it? So you will be able to uh, even in this case uh, um, uh, with only some uh, downloading only thirteen symbols we should be able to recover it. So how how would you do? What 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 is the best guess? So as you can see that you know what, what I have added is from here. I now want to recover. Uh, second parity node. Okay. So, I want to recover the second parity node this one. So, what are the things that I can do? So, there are lots of uh, things and, and there is a clue also I can give you. there are only you need to download only 13 symbols. So, uh, in leaving be beside I know you first download A1, A2, a3, A4 and C1, C2, C3, C4 and D1, T2, D3, D4 that corresponds to uh, how much? 12. So, that enables you to actually compute um, this okay. and then you see so once you compute you are able to compute this you can download this N5 of 3 that means this n5 of 3 that is uh, you know that is basically this times this. So, obviously, once you you subtract this from this what you what that is uh, sigma ci yeah and that you, you know you already have that if after this is done and so basically once you 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 are able to download this then you can uh, what what is what is not there now. So, once you have there it is this part right this part can be obtained by this minus this. So, that is this. So, what you need is only about 12 plus 1 you have recreated this one correct. So, how do you re recreate this parity same way. So, that time um, um, so, as you can see that the mainly reason is this was never used in the previous one that, that, that we use. Um, repair of the second is that the first one should be repair of first one should be easier right. I mean, so basically it is not much a problem because uh, you you same way same way you can. Uh, so, how, how do you do the re recovery this one? So, you can still do this yeah with 13 can you do? take it as an exercise and we will come back and yeah, do that. But what you notice is that still uh, these things it re retains the MDS property. Take for example here the idea is that uh, one creating this piggy bags N5 you know the, the first one was never used for in, in the previous one this one was never used uh, and that you use it to, to create a more uh, for example the N5 uh, one of them because you always start with uh, the second part. So, you download the second part and recreate B 1 and use the piggyback to come with A 1 A 2. So, you can see that whatever the piggybacked idea is the half of the, uh, the previous type and see this way uh, this way um, one part was not used and now you can use that to 
further increase the piggyback. So you can go with any levels you require. So the framework is quite general. Uh, and uh, the, in its, uh, their paper, they work through this uh, carefully, all this. And, and then you can work for any specific case of length n and create new codes and so forth. So, so obviously, it is a general framework. There are uh, steps in piggybacking framework is quite general. So what do they take? Um, two or more stripes of n and nk code. So you have a first stripe and you know you can take uh, two or more, you can take the same uh, two or more stripes of that. So now substriping. And then what do you do? Add piggybacks from the previous, some carefully chosen functions to the parities. Okay. Now that is a step two. In the third step, what do you do? In the decoding, first actually uh, do only uh, down download the depending on which one data node is lost, download the corresponding things in the second stripe and subtract the piggybacks and, and, and recover the data and then work backwards. Okay? That was that's a, that's a, that type of idea. So there are four classes are, are presented uh, in this one. So illustrating that the framework offers good design uh, you know, space for constructing various uh, the different settings. So this, the, one of the ideas that I mentioned last time is that we need you know, high rate codes. That means we would like to uh, have codes with uh, less number of parities and more number of information bit that actually optimizes uh, the space on the on the disk uh, and so high rate practicals are need and, and also we want to uh, you know want to have a lower lower uh, io input output operation for that and this actually has some high rate practical empty codes with lowest known uh, ipo during repair so this is th that has this property and the binary vectors with lowest known average data read for, for repair. This is also, uh, you know, so that's why, you know, in Facebook code, you work with the g of 2 power 8, which is the f one byte, each stream of byte, or 8 or 16. You can still work in that. Um, and this is also MDS code with the smaller, smallest possible repair locality and also parity, uh, you know, repair in regenerative codes only by systematic repair. Okay? So, whereas in this case, you take care of uh, that, um, uh, you know, that, that uh, aspects. So, let us uh, go back to the thing is that the any k r, r r s code encodes k dated bytes and into r parity bytes. So, some extent we will data in the same thing. So, what is the length? K plus, k plus r. In fact, this is what after that, this particular nomenclature is used in some spaces. The code operates on each set of k bytes and independently in identification, identical fashion. So that's called we call it as type. Okay. So following figures now shows a 10 units of data encoded during k. Code. In fact, I also mentioned that one. So it's a, a 10 for RS code. That's 10 information bit and 4 1. And the stripe is exactly. We discussed several times now. I hope by this time you are very familiar. And tomorrow when we also do with our RS4 uh, rating. So this this is the type of striping that we'll in, uh, in fact, and you, it's normally done in byte by byte fashion. Okay, so and when you and also downloaded in a one MB chunks. So some notations, uh, AIBS are now one byte length, and yeah, and it's a similar type of example. Now this example is for up to ten comma four code. So each columns constitute one stripe of the code, um, and the functions f i now operate on a k equal to ten that is a1, a2 to a10 and b1, b2 to b10 in both stripes respectively. So data bytes generate now 4 bytes, I mean we already know about it. So uh, I mean there are some typos are there I corrected you can make is just basically a1 to a10 and f1 to f4 these are the 4 functions. Okay? This is the functions given for the RS code, there is nothing special in that. Okay? Now the HIKR RS erasure codes has uh, 3 versions. One is XR, XR plus, and non-XR. It depends on the type of uh, you know, functions that you use for piggybacking. Sometimes uh, XORing with the previous one is much easier. Some, so there is an XR code, then there is XR plus so there is a minor changes. Uh, so all versions operate on pairs of stripes, and stripe is redefined. A stripe consists of two columns, and its constituent columns are substripes. Generally, two strip uh, things is much easier, but you can have more. But as I told you, more substripes means that more uh, overhead in terms of handling these uh, uh, data reads and you know management of the repair or, or even any other manage memory related purposes. So the first stripe and second stripe are done. What is done in this code is very carefully chosen. 
so for the F1 B you add now A1 plus A2 plus A3, A4 plus A5 plus A6. As you can see that these two piggybacked information is chosen such that they are uh, you know some kind of a um, 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 is a like a A1, A2, A3 is a part of the uh, original code uh, and so you can say A4, A5, A6. So, it is like a binary rearrangement only. So, there is not much of a, like in, in the previous case in the stripe I, I mentioned it could be any um, F1 you, are, you can add, but this code is basically adding some binary part. So, that way in some sense trying to retain some rank properties of these ones. So, that helps you to recover back. Okay, that, that's the idea there. Uh, F1B and F4B is some A7, 8, 9. So now, you, as you can see, that you can you you have actually piggybacked on different symbols here. First one, this will account for A1 to A3 and A4 to A5. So you can predict that if something is uh, let us say some uh, A1, A2, or A3 is down, you try to download this and try to recover. If A4, A5, A6 is part you know is, is repaired then you you try to recover this part and so forth so the the idea you can is also coming here so the reconstruction of any unit uh, is then a three step procedure uh, which first uh, does rs decoding to get b which gives the required bi so first you do uh, uh, the uh, you always take the other portion so use rs coding id and get the all b's okay then second step is to subtract all the components involve B in the other downloaded and perform XR of the resulting bytes you get back the required bit AI. So, that is how it is. So, first you start with the second stripe, use general RS idea there, then uh, get some uh, bits uh, decoded, remove the uh, piggybacked one and start working towards the AI. So, that way what, what I have done at the end is I have reduced the, uh, the downloaded data. So let's let's look at it here. Reconstruction of that that uh, code uh, takes you know you, you have this one. I, I think you keep thinking about it. Say now um, a one, a two, a three. Let us say one of uh, that is is broken. So one of the uh, one node is gone. Say a one is gone. So a one, b one. That's say that's gone. And, I, I, and uh, then I need to decide now how many different sub stripes I download so that to recover A1, B1. So, the, as you can see from the previous one, if I want to uh, you know extract uh, uh, the first I will try to get the corresponding B's, but my idea is that A1, B1, so I want to get the B1. So, what I do, so if you say for any data between A2, 3 is reconstructed using 13 bytes. So, let us see how it is 13. So, basically what, what you do, you first uh, um, any data uh, using 13 bytes, both subscribes are units 1, 2, 3. So, you choose 1, 2, 3 and the bytes of only in the second subscribe from 4 to 12. So, let us say how I do. First I, let us say A1 has gone. So, I get uh, B2 and B3 okay, and, and then B4, B5 up to B12. Okay. Let us come back with that. So, that is how many I did. So, B4 to B12, uh, B6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, 3, 6, 7 and I, I downloaded now 10 with that right. B4 to B12. Uh, so, once you get B4 to B12, so that means this is up to 10, 11, 12. So, as you can see now, I have, um, uh, so I, I can, because I have all of this, I have F1, B and I can actually extract B1 um, uh, and so I have this, so I can now extract A1, A2, A3, okay. but I already have uh, So, any data because 13 bytes. So, first uh, and in the both in the first here A2, B3, A3 is fully downloaded first right. So, totally there will be 12, 13 here. Yeah? Bo both are downloaded. So, now I am able to 
uh, extract this. So, you, I have this. So, then I can subtract this. Uh, I, and so, now I know since I can construct this, I, I get A1 plus A2, A3. A2, A3 I have, I can get A1. So, one of them and B1 is there. So, just how many, just 13 bytes, 13 bytes instead of how many? So, normally you would, you would go with uh, 20 bytes. So, you get a, a savings of how much? Uh, so, what is the, yeah, this is the thing. And the same idea goes if, uh, so th this is true, you know, because it's 1, 2, 3, any one of them. So, you, you download first two of them and the, the other one, say, that helps you to get the things. Then any data in a 4, 5, 6 using again 13 bytes, um, then you both the steps are 4, 5, 6 without that whichever one is down and then there are two, 3 times 2 is 6 there and, and there is bytes only from substitute from 1 to uh, uh, and the second substitute from units, um, you know first to 1, 2, 3 uh, and uh, 4, 5, 6 you leave it and everything. So, this is uh, totally uh, how many here, 12 how many, so this is the 7 to 13 is how much, uh, 6 plus 3, 9 plus 3, 12, nine plus 2, so there, there will be uh, the 2 of them there will be 4, uh, so correct 13, so 9 plus 4 is 13, correct, so this is 9, you know uh, repairing uh, one of these, so you do the both the stripes of others. So, totally 2 times 4 plus 9, 13. So, again 13 you can do. The same way uh, for any data uh, between 7, 8, 9 is using 14 bytes. So, you need one more byte here. So, in this case totally byte in. Uh, so, this code um, that is one of the uh, one of the code. So, this is the that is the recovery also we discussed. Is that clear idea? This is the recovery of this one. So, then hitchhiker XR plus is a, is a code. So, this code is further reduces the data required for reconstruction by employing additional XR operations. So, again this is equivalent to the uh, second option that I, I mentioned, but, uh, but still it, it keeps only two subscribes here. Uh, what it does is that having at least one parity function to be XR of all K units. So, this particular code requires one of the uh, parities of a, the parent X, uh, RS code to have uh, XR of previous symbols, which is possible to do it. You remember most of the uh, generator polynomial we constructed in the Reese element code had one column is simply the XR of other. So, it is possible to, uh, if you have a RS code, you can always uh, change it to uh, an RS code where one of the parity symbol is simply XR of the previous ones. So, that is what is used and, uh, and so once you, it is done, the second parity uh, of HI car XR, the byte of the second strip is XR with the bytes of the first substrip to give a HR plus 1. So, whatever that was the previous one was there sigma XI and now you use this and add it to this XR plus 1. This actually enables uh, XR plus reconstruction and this is, is only takes everything is only 13 bytes. So, whatever that we had difficulty of the 14 byte now is removed and we get a uh, just one. So, you can actually go through this one uh, yourself and yeah. So, it is again the decoding procedure is same as identical to the three step procedure described earlier for XR. Recovery of any unit i requires 13 bytes now. So, for repairing units 1 to 6, the surviving units are downloaded same as that of HI XR. For 789 is reconstructed using 13 bytes. Bytes of both subset unit, you know, 785 sans one of the I that has been in the that you are reconstructing and the bytes of only the second substitute from the units. So, you can see for each of them you can work out why you cannot you know do, do that. So, it is a it is a design it is nothing uh, different and I think basically the task here is to find out those functions and they have chosen XR, XR plus mainly because XR is easy to implement and that also comes in our, our design. We you know some what happens is that most of the time these uh, nodes actually issuing some read request and you would like to do as much as limit uh, you know, minimum po possibilities. So, that is why the XR is the minimum computation you could do. Though uh, in, in you know now with the advent of uh, high computing uh, doing some finite field arithmetic is not a big issue because that I mentioned also in, in the RAID topic. So, initially in the, when the RAID were created 
people were uh, creating functions so that it's easy for kind of reconstruction by using only simple XR thing. And it is true, XR is simple, so you can do fast. Uh, and there were, uh, and there were uh, attempts to actually create code avoiding uh, this um, XR function or the you know, finite field function in all the ways. So they, they should spend a lot of uh, things. But now with uh, finite fields, now with the fast computers available and sometimes some of these finite field operations can be put in a memory and you know, addition and subtraction is not a big issue at all. So with that actually you could do like um, you know RS coding and that's, how, that's where the trend went on and people went into 1410 RS code etc. So there was no need to you know and take too much of you know, computational part because they, even in our own results computations uh, actual reconstruction uh, that doesn't take much time. Most of the time is uh, uh, taken for something gets to be you know, waiting for something to happen so the delay and those kind of things. So this is a, one such uh, interesting uh, things. So hitchhiker non-XR actually uh, it guarantees the same savings as hitchhiker XR uh, even when the underlying RS code does not possess the property of at least one parity to be XR parity. So let us say you may come up with a, 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 a XR code I want to work with where first one is not a parity and this takes care of that and it just basically um, but it, it adds some additional finite field operation. So, so you, you can see that in the XR case it was pretty simple but in other case you need to actually subtract the corresponding thing from it and, and do it that is what the H thing. Uh, so recovery of any data unit now downloading 13 other units identical to HR express first and second step of the recovery are identical to the earlier third step involves RS decoding operations so obviously because it is a non uh, XR thing so you need to use RS decoding to, to do that so a little bit more thing. So the implementation in HDFS right so they implemented and showed that this actually reads, results up to decrease of 35 percent of disk IO and download required. So and also achieves the same storage and reliability property. So, so this way uh, we are not uh, you know we are not adding any additional extra unlike in uh, um, LRCs you know because of the requirement of the local repairability you need to add some extra things so that you will lose on some distance properties of the underlying code whereas uh, with this approach uh, is uh, we, we just still read in all the MDS code but still all uh, we all get the bandwidth things. But of course here we will not minimize the number of nodes to contact what we have minimized is only the number of uh, uh, part of the chunks to be deleted so that way it reduces the bandwidth. And anyway these nodes will be actually making lots of uh, uh, data reads anyway you know like after the results these nodes are sending so this gets uh, embedded as a part of the uh, Hadoop uh, uh, you know working system so that way uh, you are not. Uh, uh, you know disadvantaging too much. So, so that way so this approach is a, this framework actually retains all the MDS property yet reduces the bandwidth. In the LRC approach you just uh, you know by reducing the bandwidth by just contacting less number of nodes and you got into the trouble. So in both but this approach is a more practical approach so more looking at the actual system design and as you can see that the Hadoop 3 these codes are already comes as a part of the things and we do. Okay. So, that reports up to 35 percent decrease in the disk IO and download required. Um, so, this, this to uh, the bibliography is there, uh, there are some probably more uh, tutorial type of work should be available online to understand more on it, but uh, you would you know this you would go detail if you are trying to implement it, but you can appreciate the, uh, the, the framework.